All right, everyone. Well, thank you for attending today's webinar on uh, Permit Center success stories. Uh, I think we'll just get starting. I know we have a few people still logging in, uh, but wanted wanted to uh, say thank you for coming in. And also, we got a lot of people from all over the East Coast, from uh, Ontario, Canada, all the way down to Florida, large counties, small counties, large cities and small cities. And, and we're finding that's our customer base, you know, all these different sizes. So appreciate the chance to talk with you guys today. And uh, let's get let's get jumping in here. Wanted to uh, first go over a a quick agenda, certainly a, a quick intro, but then go into the current challenges that we're seeing out there uh, in in your industry today, as well as well as keys to excellent customer service, uh, a technology overview, and then jump into the project uh, the product demonstration. We will have Q and A at the end, but also hopefully everyone's seen their uh, ability to ask questions. Uh, on on this uh, webinar. And so if you do have questions during the webinar, I am lucky enough to have Aiden Sear uh, also uh, online with me today, keeping an eye on the chat and uh, questions and answers. And he can answer a lot of those questions and even kind of bring them into the webinar and maybe stop me and, and, and bring up a good point that I might be uh, leaving out. Uh, so so keep those questions coming. Don't have to hold them off to the end. You know, wanted to start off today. Uh, we have been talking with uh, building and permitting departments across the country and in Canada, even, even other countries. But we're seeing a, a, a similar challenge uh, for you guys. And I'm sure a lot of this is not uh, uh, news for you, uh, certainly in the permit process, there are many different uh, approval agencies, uh, but one of the things we are seeing in that is it, there are a lot of siloed departments, right? I'm, I'm talking with Boston, Massachusetts right now, and they, you know, how the, how the process continues in a different department is unknown to other departments. And so uh, certainly a bit of a challenge there, uh, but also, uh, having all those applicable codes, you know, having to be met simultaneously and failure to satisfy even one requirement will delay the entire process, right? Very com complicated process, but you can imagine how daunting it is for an individual, a resident without construction experience that's coming to you for the first time, right? They don't know what to do. Uh, so we have those information gatherers and right and this is a, a big benefit that we're bringing to a, a lot of our customers is they have an, an app you know they have a permit system they have the ability to apply for permits online but what they don't have is a way of gathering information for these residents that are clueless right they're not ready to apply for the permit today maybe never uh but they're gathering information. What are the setbacks going to be? What are the fees going to be? You know, other requirements and restrictions. And as you guys know, there isn't a simple, uh, you know, what's the word? Checklist, so to speak, for each one because things change. And so the, the goal of this webinar too is to show how we can help manage those information gatherers at, as they come. Um, for a lot of our customers, now customers, and before they were customers, they, like potentially you, were looking for an answer to this question. How do we help residents before they're ready to apply for a permit as they're gathering data? And, and, and the first answer many of them do is they say, well, we're going to get some high quality handouts. We're going to put together some powerful you know, things that answers their questions. We're going to put together a, a, a organize our website more effectively and, and try to get this, all this information together. But at the end of the day, for the customer, you know, certainly these first time customers that don't know what they're looking at, it's information overload, right? We have some uh, customers that have 
60 documents on, on their website that apply to different permit types. And uh, But for the customer, they don't know where to begin. And certainly at the end of the day, it's hard for them to find this information, right? Where do I go? Even if they're it's staring them right in the face. So invariably, they have to call you guys, right? Or come in and say, help me. And the challenge, as you guys know, is it's not easy, right? It doesn't, it's not just a, a one minute, here, here's a document, see you later. For many of our customers, it's a half hour process of, well, to put an addition on, I have to check out your zoning. I have to, you know, look at all these various things. And then I'm going to hand you a bunch of, of documents and, uh, and it takes some time. So the challenges for you guys uh, and what we're seeing across the country is Number one, kind of a, a lack of consistency in enforcement. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, for various permit texts, and certainly as you get larger and larger organizations like counties or cities, there's a lot of permit texts. And, and they, many of them have a good idea of the processes, but they might leave a piece out or they might miscalculate something. And uh, so what ends up happening is you have your applicants gaming the system, right? Calling multiple uh, permit techs in the permit department, trying to get a different answer. And while that's not the greatest thing in the world, it also takes up more of your time, right? So you, you guys are answering the questions three times in a row because this guy's trying to get a different uh, answer. And there is no single source of the truth. Um, it, the other challenge, though, in these situations is customers can't retain everything that they're getting from you. You're giving them information, you're passing them various documents, and, and they're sitting there trying to write this all down, and, and it's difficult for them and, and frustrating for them and you. Uh, and as you know, every process is different, so you're having to go through that to, to show it to them. And... Um, and it's hard to keep up with the changing regulations, right? You know, you get building codes changing, various regulations changing, and to keep a staff up to date and how that affects every permit is a challenge out there. We all, you also have new staff that needs to be trained. You may have that, if you're lucky, you have that veteran staff member that uh, uh, been there 20 years and knows everything back to front but you may also have some people that are new that are still catching on. And for our smaller customers, the challenge they have is they do have someone with 20 years experience that knows it all, but what happens when she leaves? And uh, it'd be great to be able to get that information out of her head and, and, and have it uh, you know, working in a system as well. Uh, the other challenge though, and what we're hearing and getting a lot of calls from, from our uh, prospects is we got actual permitted work that we need to work on and uh, these questions you know before the permit process and these information gatherers are taken up sometimes 50 percent of our time is spent answering these people's questions and so we'd like to reduce that if not eliminate it and uh, uh, work work towards that but the biggest challenge is the people keep coming and the calls keep coming and and you still have all those questions before they're ready to apply for a permit, right? So, you know, with our customer base and we have some really strong customers out there that really were focused uh, on creating this service excellence with their customers. And, and what did they come back to us with, uh, you know, for, for their kind of requirements? Um, first off is identify challenges early, right? Uh, better for this person to know your property is in a flood zone. So putting an addition on is going to require some additional steps or whatever exactly it requires. Or you're trying to put a three-family home in, in, a, in an area that's zoned for single family homes. Better that the individual knows that early on so there isn't that frustration down the road that frustrates you, frustrates them, and, and isn't necessary. The other piece is 
to be able to provide clear direction to the customer tailored to their specific needs. Uh, we're talking with a lot of uh, municipalities out there and counties that they have these checklists, but when we ask, well, does that apply to everyone that's putting up an addition? And they say, well, no, it doesn't apply to everyone. And so let's have, you know, in essence, a checklist, a, a customized checklist that does apply to everyone so we don't have any uh, problems. Also, being consistent when you're enforcing codes, right? Don't don't allow people to game the system because you can twist your, your uh, project any way you want. The system's going to give you back the same answer. And also offer this service at all hours, right? Don't just have them have to wait until you guys open up shop uh, to be able to get their answers. Let them get their answers in the morning before they go to work or after they come home from work at six o'clock at night or on the weekend. Uh, and again, reducing those calls uh, to you. And that is what we're going to be talking about today and what Camino has uh, built. Uh, and we'll talk about some of those success stories. Um, we've been able to take your regulations, utilize the handouts that you've created, and uh, as well as bring in your GIS layers so we know your zoning and zoning restrictions, but also incorporate that staff knowledge, incorporate those silos of information uh, within the process. And, and now it can be in essence shared by uh, everyone. So how we do it is we, our system asks some very simple questions of uh, this, the individual that comes to it, right? And again, they're simple questions because we, we, we understand these people don't have any construction background, uh, but we're also in the background using your GIS layers to identify, hey, this person's in a flood zone or this person is only zoned for single family homes, you know, whatever it is. And at the end of the day, truly customizing their guide to their specific circumstance, right? So it isn't just a checklist we're spitting out, it's a customized guide for them. So we have uh, a few options for our customers. Um, we have a lot of customers like Fairfax County, Virginia or Memphis, Tennessee, that both have Acela for their permit systems and they paid millions of dollars for their Acela system and it's not going anywhere, and we understand that. And uh, but when we talk about that standalone guide for information only, uh, can sit on the outside for those applicants that are trying to gather information before they apply. And our guide, as a final step, can be: Hey, when you're ready, click here, and we can take them to your. In, the, in, in this example, you're a seller system, right? And they can start the process of applying and going through the process, right? But giving them all that information ahead of time. We also have another option that we call our application portal, which uses the intelligence of the guide of all the information that we had gathered to now allow that applicant and, and supply that applicant with only the forms, fees, and documents they're going to need to properly submit a, uh, a complete permit application. Um, uh, and this has been great for some of our customers who they don't have, their system is older maybe. Uh, Albemarle County, Virginia is a great example. They have a, I think it's about a 12 year old uh, city view system that doesn't have a uh, application portal. So they have a very user-friendly front end for their applicants now to be able to gather information before they apply, but also when they're ready, they just you know, fill out the forms and pay the fees, et cetera, as, as a complete submittal. And then it goes through the process. We also have a complete permit system for those uh, entities that are looking for that too, but, uh, um, but we're going to be focusing on these two uh, today.
So the ultimate uh, you know, delivery that Camino is bringing our customers today is number one, a single source of the truth. Uh, there's not that concern of people gaming the system. In fact, we want applicants or potential applicants to be able to game the system, log into Camino nine different times, put in you know, different sizes for the shed you wanna build, see if it gives you different answers, that's okay. But the system's not going to give them different answers for the same project, uh, but also uh, maybe that helps them when they're ready to apply, right? But they haven't taken your time, they're just using the system's time. And what we are finding as well is an increased level of customer satisfaction with your existing permit system because now people are coming to the application and they, they know what to expect. They have the information that they needed. There aren't any, what the heck is that, you know, in the middle of the application process uh, that, um, you know, can lower customer satisfaction. And ultimately for you all, uh, fewer calls and questions into the permit center. A great example of this is City of Santa Clarita, California, which is one of our early adopters. They were one that were really trying with what they had to build an organized way of sharing information. And when they saw Camino, they went, that's it. And uh, they have been very happy with us. Uh, and one of the big pieces they've seen is 30% fewer calls and 30% fewer, less traffic into the permit center because people now can get their own information, right? And very easily. Uh, they also see when people do come in and say, hey, can you help me with my guide? You know, I don't like the internet or whatever, whatever reason they have. Um, in, in their permit department, they just open up Camino and they ask the questions that Camino has for their specific project, generate a guide, and are able to do that in 10 minutes where it used to take them 30 minutes. So a lot quicker, be able to turn those people around with all the information they need. So some of our customers, I won't go into them all, we have over a hundred of them, but uh, just know we have larger customers like Fairfax County, Virginia and Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, Pompano Beach, Florida is on with us with a business license system that accepts applications, et cetera. Um, Charles County, Maryland is on with us, uh, as well as even uh, Sturgis, Michigan with 10,000 people is on with us with a, a permit system. So one of the pieces I just wanted to point out as we, as we dive into this is uh, Camino's configurability allows you as a county or city to be able to use us a lot of different ways. And what we find is, as we're implementing Camino, maybe for the building department, planning and zoning is looking over their shoulder and saying, hey, I have complicated processes. I, could I generate a guide for my people or you know, special events and business licensing also has you know, complicated processes and they have people coming in trying to gather information and you can use and share the single annual subscription to, uh, to for everyone, right? And, and share that and get and put together guides um, for everyone. Last point before we jump into the, the demo itself is uh, when we talk about uh, the back end of a system, it, one thing I wanted to emphasize when you're out there looking for uh, you know, systems as a whole, especially for rapidly changing building departments, make sure that the back end of the system can be managed by the people in the permit department, right? It doesn't require IT uh, people or, uh, you know, the, the company itself to have to code the information. Uh, look for a system that's been built from the ground up and requires no coding. And that's, we do that. Uh, and so allows some of our customers build their own guides. Um, certainly Camino is there to manage that process for you if you need us to. But Santa Clarita, going back to them again, they they had they built their own guide because the, we trained their people, you know, certain people in the in the permit department on the logic of Camino. 
And then they took all that information out of their head and built their guides uh, in that way. So good stuff. So let's uh, jump into a, uh, a demo. Uh, wanted to first show off a, a couple front ends. This is Charles County, Maryland. Uh, they, uh, they came on with us. They have an intergov system and they, uh, you can see here, kind of do it as a step one, step two process. Step one is the guide, which is us. Step two is their intergov system. <coughs> Santa Clarita, uh, they have a big button that takes you to uh, takes you to Camino, and they when people call in, they refer them to the guide. And one of the nice things is when they're being referred. They know they're not sending this resident into a deep, dark pit of despair that will uh, frustrate them and have them call back, right? So, uh, and so they they are comfortable doing that. And when a a customer does come and click here, they come to a landing page, a lot like this, and uh, and you can see they can come in as a guest if they want to. Maybe they just want to figure out what their setbacks are and, and that's it. They can go in and, and get that information and go. But the nice thing about logging in and signing in is it allows you to save your work, right? So if I come up here, um, you'll see all of my submissions. And so I can come back and actually refer back to the various guides that I may have generated. And, and work with that uh, information. If this was the first time that I logged in, I'd come to a landing page a lot like this. Um, now this is a demo site, so you can see we have everything from opening up a business to planning and zoning and special events. But for some of our uh, guide users, they just have one button. Uh, they just have residential building projects because that's where they have their biggest challenges. But just know these, these other areas can be opened up as well if there's useful ways you can use that. So coming in to residential building projects, you can see we start breaking down your work. Important point for you guys to know is this is all configurable by you, <coughs> right? So if you don't, if this isn't how you would organize your projects, you don't have to, you can organize them use different types of wording. You'll also see we even have a Google-like search bar up here. So if someone just came in and typed in pool, uh, they would see all the information that dealt with pools, right? Uh, um, but in this, in this instance, we're gonna go into a new accessory structure. And you can see again, it's drilling down. What type of accessory structure uh, do you want? And in this example, we're going to say it's a garage or carport. So now uh, Camino is asking for an address. And the reason it's asking for an address is because we're wanting to use your GIS information. So if this were you, you would see your city or county on the map. These drop down options would be your, your addresses. Uh, and in selecting an address, Camino puts a little bullseye over the over the home. Uh, we can even open up a satellite view here so they can take a look and go, yeah, that's that's my house. And so they can confirm the location. And by doing that, we're already starting to customize the guide, right? So we know the zones they're in. We know what type of restrictions are out there. Uh, and we can go into those simple questions. Again, we want to keep, we don't want anyone to have to call you to say, I don't understand the question. So is, is the structure going to be larger than 120 square feet? Will the wall height exceed 10 feet? You can see here we have, I'm not sure how to answer it button. So if you want, you can add those and include additional information, right? Um, you know, uh, maybe it could include an attachment a hyperlink, anything that can properly inform the customer so they can come back and go, okay, yes, it is gonna exceed 10 feet. Does the structure include plumbing and heating? Is it visible from the front of the house? And does construction, is it construction gonna impact the existing sidewalk roads? Um, 
more than likely, if we have uh, people in the permit department on the call, you you recognize these are these are uh, these are the questions that we ask when they're standing in front of us about this specific type of project, right? And so, and that's usually the case. Now the system can ask the questions. Another important point to point out is sometimes in how they answer the question may generate more questions on the system. So if they say yes to something, maybe we have a couple extra questions to clarify it further. And if they answer no, we don't ask any more questions. So hey, David, we, submit, yep. Hey, we just, got a, we just got a good question. I just wanted to, to stop for a second. It was, uh, can we integrate uh, with our own GIS platform like Esri or something like that? Yeah, great question. And, 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 and the answer is yes, right? So we can, we can, because we're going to use and integrate with your GIS for all those, you know, zoning information, flood zone information. For some counties, uh, a powerful piece is uh, even the, the county area that you're responsible for, right? Some of these uh, counties, they're the areas that they're responsible for looks kind of like Swiss cheese because there's a lot of incorporated cities that have their own permit systems. And so one of the nice things Camino can say with the city limits and county limits is this permit, we don't manage this type of permit. You know, it's not in our area. And so be able to, you know, get them going to the right spot versus uh, taking up your time in that area. But yeah, great question. Um, so now, in this example of Camino, uh, in this example of this guide, we're also wanting to generate the fees that are going to be paid. So we, we can give for a guide only uh, system, we can, uh, we can generate the fees. Now they're not going to pay the fees for a guide only system, but now at least they know, hey, these, this permit's going to cost you $750. So when they do get to your and if they do get to, to apply for the permit, they're not shocked when they get there. Uh, and, and this example is just based on a simple project valuation. Um, if you had more complex fee calculations, we can do those as well. But in submitting our answers, we have our guide, right? And so this is kind of a summary page. And so they can see, okay, $650 in fees, you know, what to expect, you know, various information that they're going to need, but they can, if they want, they can get started and go into the guide itself. Uh, now I wanted to preface as we go into this, the one that I'm showing you here is a um, application portal, which takes the benefits of the guide informational, but also allows you to apply for a permit here as well. Um, in the situation for, I know we have a lot of people that have permit systems that have application portals that are great, uh, that you just wouldn't use that bit of functionality, right? So instead of filling out a form, you would just be sharing the form that they're going to fill out in your, in your system, right, in, in that way. But I wanted to sh show both, so for those that needed it, they could see it. So so when we talk about uh, pre, you know, informational, we have reviewing land survey requirements with a link to a surveyor list, uh, re review foundation embrace information, and they can uh, download this uh, form. Uh, and even uh, fire hazard zone requirements, right? So they have a link to go to additional uh, uh, construction. The important point to point out here is the only reason that they're getting fire zone requirements is because their house is in a fire zone, right? If, if their house was not in a fire zone, they wouldn't get this as part of their guide because again, it's truly customized. We also have the setback information because we know the zones that they're, they're involved with. We can share that information and even uh, you know, give them links to additional information if they care. Most people just want to know what applies to them. On each of these pages, you guys see a, a, a chat functionality. Now, this is something you can turn on or off. You don't have to have it. But what it, what it allows for is if I say I have a question and I ask my question here and post it, um, <clears throat> 
Camino knows where to send this question. In this example, it's going to send it to planning and zoning. And whether it's an individual or a, a group in planning and zoning are going to get an email with this question. And they can, you can reply right from your email and maybe start a conversation with this, uh, you know, this resident uh, to clarify their question. But one of the nice things with Camino is we save that conversation in Camino. So everyone can benefit from it. And I'll show you that in a, in a second. Now, when we go into the application, again, if this was only guide only, we could just be sharing forms, you know, showing them what they're going to need uh, it, you know, when they get to your application portal. But for our application portal, we're using the intelligence of the guide now to just share what forms need to be filled out, what documents. We're not, we're not making them pick anything, right? So in this example, we have a form builder where we can identify mandatory fields. Uh, and Camino is not going to let your applicant, you can see here, we, we already collected this field, so it filled it in. And uh, uh, um, and but it's keeping track of have you completed all the mandatory fields? One thing Camino won't let the the applicant do is submit an incomplete form or you know not not complete a document. So you don't have to worry about that. We also can digitize your PDF documents and, you know, and again, identify mandatory fields that they have to fill out and sign and date in this example. And you can see we got another checkbox. So for this person now, they could log out, log back in and, uh, you know, and, and pick up where they left off. But now we go into documents. You can detail what you, what, you know, the format you need this in, uh, and in this example, I can just drag and drop this in. Uh, on engineering plans, same thing. We'll drag and drop them in. And on this setback verification form, we've given them even an attachment on, we'd like it in this format, right? And so I can, again, drag and drop this in. And in this example, Camino's got everything it needs. It's got a complete submittal. And so, it says you want to submit and they can submit. Okay, so, so there we have on the front side. On the back side of the system, the back end of the system, if I refresh this page, <clears throat> we have the submittal here that we just did. Uh, and let's say I call in or come in and, and have a question. I can, uh, your applicants can search me up here by my address or my name or simply come in and click into the system. And with Camino now, we're, we're letting you know, what is this application for? Again, it could be just guide only and not an application. It could be just informational. Or, and what the address, and also what are the other submissions at this address that have come through? And at the bottom, you can see we have this activity uh, uh, place where we can see when they submitted, but also we can see that question that I had and that conversation that may have occurred right there. That's where you would see that. Here's all the information we collected, but also here is the, uh, the questions that were asked and how they were answered it. So, so one nice thing is someone comes into the building department and says, hey, no one ever told me I needed uh, an oak tree permit, you know, for my project. And now the inspector is telling me everything has to stop because I need an oak tree permit. Well, you could go back. Maybe there was a question that said, do you have oak trees on your site that will be affected? And they answered, no, I don't. And that's why you didn't tell them about oak trees. So you have that kind of backup for yourself. You also have all the information that was shared with them. You know, we talked about, you know, re reviewing foundation embrace information. If they have a question, you can go in and review what they're, uh, what they're talking about to help them. And we also have this active map of the location as well as the GIS information for the site.
I have uh, Santa Clarita's up here. So you can see there, you know, one of their submittals and you can see the, uh, the inf you know, the zoning information that's shared on the site that might be helpful for the group uh, as you go. So all of it's there. We also have the documents that were uploaded and the payment information as of yet unpaid. But in this example, let's say, I just to show some additional functionality, let's say you looked at this and these aren't the correct engineering plans, right? They're for a different project, whatever the problem, we give you the ability to request changes on this submittal. <coughs> so you can click in here, you can identify what, uh, what you want uh, changed. In this example, we'll say it is engineering plans. And we'll say engineering plans are long. And, and we can come in here and say uh, add additional notes and request changes. So now for your for your applicant out there, we can go to the submissions, you know, they'll they'll receive an email. Uh, about these change requests. And here we have, it's a change request. Engineering plans are wrong. We've identified uh, what they need to resubmit. And, uh, and they can come in as an example here and resubmit their engineering plans, submit them back to the city and, and you receive them, right? And uh, so here, if we refresh this page, it goes from change requested to change resubmitted, you can review those documents and uh, whether there's integration set up with your existing permit system, or again, if this was a standalone guide, you could work through that. Wanted to also just now point through a, a couple uh, items here. I'd like to use Santa Clarita for this to show you the active map that we have within our system. So for Santa Clarita, they are guide only. They're just informational only. And, and they can see, you know, as an example, I just wanna see uh, guides that were generated over the last month. And I only wanna see ones where a guide was provided. So Camino can filter out the information, allowing you to click on a specific one, review the basic information here. And if you want, click on it and it opens up the uh, the guide that was generated for this individual. One of the neat things with uh, Santa Clarita is you can see how the system is asking kind of its own questions on the back end. These aren't questions that are that are being asked of the applicant, but this is is you know the system saying, hey, is it in this zone? No, it's not. Is it in this zone? Yes, it is. And so again, system working for you to answer a bunch of questions. Uh, we also have a, a report, and this is a usage report for you guys to be able to see in this example over the last month in Santa Clarita, <coughs> they had they had 433 people visit the site. 321 of them started guides and 148 of them completed a guide. Because they do not have an application portal with us, you can see that's zero. Um, but we can work with you because this allows us to identify where people might be getting stuck and stopping to help you improve your guide on a monthly basis. But you can also see when people are coming in to generate guides. In Santa Clarita, they're coming in at six o'clock in the morning and after six o'clock at night, because again, it's easy to use. They can, you know, they can manage it themselves. You can also see top submission types uh, here as well. Uh, that might be helpful for you. Last thing before we go to our questions and answers, I just wanted to show quickly our rule builder over here on the left. And just to show you again, the ease of use of our system, right? And how literally anyone in the permit department can use this. So it's really broken down by submission types. 
And you can see how you can organize your different types of projects how you want very easily. Uh, and on the on the right hand side, we have the steps. And the steps are the various steps that they're going to go through uh, in, you know, in the guide or the application portal, whatever it is. Um, and our rule builder is we'll do this uh, ADU one here is connects the two, right? So rule number one is these steps will always appear in a guide of the submission type. So we can scroll down and you can see the steps that are included. And we can very easily edit these connections and you know disconnect them, connect new ones, whatever. But rule two is how we start to customize the guide, right? These steps will only appear based on how they answer this question, right? The question is, does the existing structure have fire sprinklers? Uh, you can see here we have connections in, in Santa Clarita, LA County. It manages the fire department, so they're also involved in the guide. Um, and we can easily edit these conditions. And, and what I wanted to show you quickly here is you're not seeing a lot of coding. You're not seeing any coding. Uh, so does the existing structure have fire sprinklers is the question. You can see here it's a yes or no question. It also could be a number. How tall is your fence, or, you know, or multiple choice whatever works best for your situation. And we include the steps if the answer is equal to yes. Simple enough, right? And, and no coding, no fancy language being used in here uh, at all uh, in, in that way. So with that, uh, wanted to stop and, and see if there were any questions uh, uh, that we could answer here at the end uh, before uh, before our time is up. So I'm cranking away on one right now, but John Darius was asking um, which of these uh, kind of agencies you're talking about are using the guide and application portals. Um, okay. Because he'd be only interested in using um, kind of both at the same time. And I'm typing it out, but you might be able to just explain how with yeah. the application portal they're related. Yeah, absolutely. And uh and that's a great question. Well, we, we do have customers that are like that. As an example, they have maybe a big city has a guide and it's very helpful. The guide's very helpful, again, for those front end users. But maybe there's one department, a, a small department. It might even be a special usage, right? During COVID, we had a bunch of those uh, restaurants that wanted to have, you know, utilize parking spaces for, for restaurant seats outside. And for a short period of time, they just wanted to quickly put together a way to apply for those. Um, and they used Camino for that. You know? um, so yeah, to, to the point, Albemarle County is using us for an application portal. Fairfax County is using us for a guide only. Uh, and, and, and again, we can mix and match as well because it's literally a, a, a flick of a switch. If you've, if you've built the guide as an example, you can turn it on and then do more than just share information. You could uh, pay a fee, su you know, uh, submit a document, fill out forms, et cetera. Yeah, absolutely. Any other questions out there, Aiden, that you're seeing? Nothing, nothing new. We had one question about um, kind of where the documents would be stored. I answered um, basically, um, you know, someone was wondering whether or not they'd be able to kind of have the documents transferred into another, uh, you know, resource for file management like SharePoint right. or OneHub. Yeah. And I was just explaining how Albemarle is, uh, you know, integrated with LaserFiche to kind of have the documents get placed into there, but also how yep. Camino is able to kind of store the documents within Camino. It's really easy to yep. kind of manage them. So. Right. The other important point in that for uh, those on the call is Camino does not limit your data storage, right? Uh, so if if you are using us to upload, you know, upload documents, people ask about what about file sizes? There's no file size limit. And we're also not limiting you to your total storage, you know, so you have to pay more. It's unlimited usage there as long as you're with us. But to Aiden's point, we do have some customers like uh, 
Albemarle that they want the comfort of knowing the documents are off off the the cloud, you know, on the, on on the web and in their facility on in using laser fusion. So we can we can facilitate that as well. So yeah, and, and for sure, for those of you that are interested, it, it is pretty eye-opening, especially those of you that have large uh, permit system implementations uh, and large permit systems. Uh, the cost of our guide is very small, but also the implementation of our guide is very fast. When you're used to year or multi-year implementations, Camino is a matter of months. Uh, and we can have you up and running and, and, and offload some of that work from your permit staff uh, there as well. So good, we all set, Aiden? Yep, one question just came in about um, our licensing structure, but I was a little bit confused as to whether that had to do with our sort of our pricing or if they're asking about things like business licensing and, and pet licensing. So I haven't heard back. Yeah, on that it, yeah. Their, their question their question usually revolves around pricing and and great question. Uh, pricing is based on uh, uh, this really the size of the county or city and it's unlimited users. Both unlimited users on the front end, certainly unlimited access for your residents, but also on the back end, unlimited access for you on the back end. And important to know that outside agencies, agencies outside the city or county can also have access. So we're working with uh, Macon Bibb County Planning and Zoning right now, and they have, they have to go out to the city, they have to go out to the health department, they have to go out to the state, and all those entities can be part of their system, right? It doesn't have to be limited to just Macon Bibb County in that example. So, but yeah, great question. So good, Aiden, all good? I was asking, one person just asked how long typical implementation is for guide for permitting, planning and business tax, um, okay. which is about two to three months if it's a guide and maybe a month or two yeah. longer if it's for the application portal. Exactly, yeah, so uh, uh, great question. Yeah, so it's usually, it could be very quick. Uh, Macon Bibb uh, County uh, Planning and Zoning is implementing a full permit system in three months. Uh, and now that's an all hands on deck situation. So I don't wanna make that as the normal. Uh, they have to be uh, up and running by, I think it was the end of May. Um, but yeah, for most of our uh, guide uh, implementations, it is usually about three months uh, is all it takes. And then just, just as a note to everyone, we will be sending out a link to the recording to everyone who attended um, and even those who registered but weren't able to attend. So if one of your, you know, if you were with an agency or had a few people registered and someone couldn't come, they'll be getting a recording of this as well. Good deal. Absolutely. Oh, here's a great here's a great question, David, at the end. Someone yeah. just asked, can we create custom rules or are we limited to what is in the box? Oh yeah, great question. Yep, in, in, to, to a degree, every rule is custom, you don't like to say custom, but every rule is configurable, right? So the you give us a rule you have and we can configure Camino to work with that rule. And uh, yeah, so differing from a lot of systems we've seen out there where you're kind of limited to the functionality that you have and you kind of have to, you kind of have to twist your, your process to match what it can do. With Camino, you do not have to do that. So you can, we can configure it, work with the process that you have. Uh, and that's something that our customers are very happy about when, when it comes time to implement, where we really work with what, what they need and make it happen on our side. So good. Well, we've gone a little a little over time. I appreciate it, guys, today. Thank you for your time. And again, like Aiden said, we'll, we'll uh, pass this video on to you. But if there are any other questions, uh, I know you have my email with contact information. 
please feel free to reach out to us. We'll certainly be reaching back to you uh, in, in the near future with, with the recording, et cetera, with our contact information. But I uh, hope it was helpful. And thank you again for your time today, guys. Talk to you later. Bye -bye. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your Wednesdays.